In the immortal words of Horatio Nelson, a ship's a fool to fight a fort. Now I know the days of coastal gun forts are long gone, but it doesn't change the fact that land-based maritime strike assets, operating in the littoral environment, are every captain's worst nightmare. You're essentially fighting another ship that can reposition rapidly, withdraw into impenetrable bunkers, and fire from concealed locations, all while you're unable to maneuver freely and can't keep the enemy at a comfortable range. Sea lanes, island chains, choke points, and other littoral terrain are the harsh operational realities governing warfare in the Pacific. And in that environment, land-based maritime strike is rapidly becoming one of the most decisive capabilities a nation can field to effectively create denial through cost imposition. I know I've already covered the Australian Army's current attempt to fill this capability gap under Project Land 8113 Phase 2, but I want to delve deeper into the lesser known of the two options, Kongsberg's joint venture with Talis, the Strike Master. Strike Master is a ready now, sovereign, land-based maritime strike capability built entirely from systems already in Australian Defence Force service. Hopefully by the end of today's video you'll have a greater understanding of the choice facing Australia's fledgling Defence Delivery Agency, and I look forward to reading your thoughts in the comments below. So, what is a Strike Master? Strike Master is the integration of the Naval Strike Missile, or NSM, Twin Pack Launcher onto the venerable Australian Bushmaster Protected Mobility Vehicle Chassis. This configuration is known as the Strike Master Naval Strike Missile Coastal Defence System, or NSM CDS. Critically, Strike Master is a military off the shelf solution. The launcher module is identical to the NSM launchers already fitted to the Royal Australian Navy surface combatants. The effector is the same Block 1 Alpha missile already in ADF and 14 other countries' service. The command and control architecture is already compatible with existing ADF targeting and sensor networks. Strike Master is not reinventing the wheel. It is taking proven components and placing them into a well-tested, understood and manoeuvrable land-based configuration. Now it's important to realise what this pre-existing nature means in practical terms for the ADF. Let's start with the most overlooked aspect of any procurement, training. The coursework and training pipeline for NSM and Bushmaster operation, maintenance and repair are already written. I understand this may mean the Army will have to speak with the Navy about borrowing some SMEs. Shock horror, I know, but assuming they can leap this almost insurmountable hurdle, the hard work is already done. For doctrinal, operational and tactical inspiration, the Army merely has to look to the US Marine Corps, who have been operating their Nemesis or Navy Marine Expeditionary Ship Interdiction System, which includes the NSM, since 2020, declaring the weapon system IOC in 2023. Speaking of operational use, let's delve a little deeper. Strike Master Strategic Mobility and Survivability. Strike Master is designed for Australia's geography. It is deployable by C-17 or C-130 Juliet and transportable by all current and planned ADF landing craft. Once deployed, the Bushmaster platform enables long-range self-deployments by road in an 800km radius, cross-country manoeuvre and sustained operation in complex terrain at speeds of up to 100km per hour. Its relatively modest size allows concealment from adversary surveillance and reconnaissance, which directly enhances survivability. In practical terms, this makes Strike Master an unsinkable maritime strike capability, one that can relocate, hide, rearm and persist in the battle space. That persistence is central to deterrence by denial. Let's look at the missile itself. At the heart of Strike Master is the Naval Strike Missile Block 1 Alpha. NSM was designed from the outset to survive in heavily defended environments. Its entire concept of operations is built around stealth, autonomy and survivability. According to Kongsberg, the NSM's core design principles were a very low radar cross-section, passive detection capability, a sea skimming and terrain following flight profile, high G terminal maneuvers, and autonomous target recognition. NSM Block 1 Alpha provides precision strike against both sea and land targets at ranges beyond 300 kilometers. NSM survivability comes from how it flies and how it sees. The missile uses a passive, high-resolution imaging infrared seeker it does not emit radar energy. This means it's effectively invisible to passive electronic support measures. The seeker also provides autonomous target recognition, allowing the missile to classify ship types and select precise aim points. During flight, the NSM can approach targets over land or sea, use terrain masking around coastlines, islands and peninsulas, fly extremely low in the terminal phase at sea skimming altitudes, executing high G, programmable end game maneuvers and apply target recognition software to ensure it's not seduced into striking escorts or nearby merchant traffic. 
Its thrust to rate ratio is greater than 1, enabling extreme agility in the final seconds before impact. This combination is specifically intended to defeat modern soft kill and hard kill air defense systems. NSM is not just about hitting a target, it's about hitting the right part of the target. The Imaging Infrared Seeker allows the missile to identify ship classes and assign precise hit points. This maximizes warhead effectiveness while supporting rules of engagement compliance. The missile's guiding philosophy is described as innocent until proven guilty, reducing the risk of fratricide or unattended engagements. When fired in salvos, NSM can coordinate near simultaneous impacts, overwhelming defense systems and delivering concentrated effects at selected aim points. Straight from the Kongsberg brochure, NSM's key characteristics include high subsonic speed, a weight of approximately 407 kilograms, a length just under 4 meters, ranges greater than 300 kilometers, and a warhead between 120 and 125 kilograms. I have seen different sources about that, whether it's high explosive or armor piercing, it seems like it's up to the country that does the selection. Hopefully now you're starting to see why 14 other countries, including the US, UK, Germany and Canada, are already operating or have ordered the NSM. But what does this mean if you're an Australian procurement officer? Sounds like a good excuse to segue into technology readiness levels. Technology readiness levels, or TRLs, are a structured way to measure how mature a technology is, from basic research all the way to operational deployment. At the lowest levels, TRLs 1 to 3 are research and proof of concept, TRLs 4 to 5 involve laboratory validation, CRLs 6 and 7 are prototype demonstrations. Most defense projects struggle in this middle range. Now TRL 8 means that a system is fully built and qualified, and TRL 9 means something very specific. It means the system has already been proven through successful operations in its intended environment, and is ready for full deployment. Now according to Defense Science and Technology Group, TRL 9 is the highest possible maturity level. NSM is classified as TRL 9 because it's already an operational service. It has already been live fired by multiple nations, deployed by navies and land forces, and integrated across ship, vehicle and aircraft platforms. Strike Master inherits that maturity because it uses in-service missiles, in-production vehicles and existing command systems. There is no developmental leap required. This is why Strike Master is described as low risk across operational, technical, schedule and cost dimensions. Now I know I beat this to death in the last video, but I think it bears reiterating. Strike Master will be built and sustained in Australia. Fabrication, integration and sustainment will occur across Victoria, South Australia and New South Wales, involving more than 100 Australian suppliers. Key facilities include Tallers Australia's Bendigo Protected Vehicle Centre of Excellence, Kongsberg Defence Australia's Mawson Lakes Integration Facility and Kongsberg Missile Production Factory in Newcastle, which should begin NSM production in 2027. The program supports hundreds of skilled jobs and secures Australia's sovereign missile manufacturing base. Exports further reinforce that industrial depth, keeping production lines open and skills retained if Australia ever decides they have enough in stock. So why does the Strike Master matter? Strike Master is not a revolutionary technology. Its strength lies in something far more important, maturity, survivability, and immediacy. It delivers long-range maritime strike, it leverages systems already trusted by the ADF, it is mobile, concealable, and persistent in the battle space, it is built and sustained in Australia, and it is ready now. In an era where timelines matter as much as performance, Strike Master represents a credible, sovereign answer to one of the most demanding operational problems Australia faces. I hope you all enjoyed, if you did please don't forget to like and subscribe and if you're feeling especially generous, I've just launched my Patreon, where I'll be recording a weekly podcast going over what's caught my eye in global procurement sphere. Have a good day.